Hello, this is going to be me ranking every number ever. A bit about myself, I have a degree in mathematics and computer science. I'm always constantly counting. Um, I love random numbers. Anyone that knows me in real life or online knows that I use random numbers for basically every decision in my life. And I've even got some, some de uh, dice here on my desk. Sorry, some die here on my desk. Um, I'm also a freak in the sheets, and by that I do mean Excel, although I don't even fuck with Excel anymore. I'm a library office calc type of guy now. Um, I do a lot of programming. I like a lot of ranked systems. I like ranking things, counting things, random numbers. I just like numbers, so I think I'm really qualified to do this list of ranking every number ever. And some people have come close. They've tried to rank numbers, but I think mine should be the most exhaustive and at the same time be one of the most opinionated and also a little bit controversial. But I think I would, I would, I would say that I'm definitely amongst... Look, there are definitely people that know numbers better than me, but I would definitely say I am a number expert. There are other experts out there, but I definitely say I am one of them. And we're going to get started off with 365. I'm going to put all these numbers... Like I don't like putting them in the middle. Hold on. Let me just do a quick bit of formatting here. Um, let me just make a little box over here so we know this is the current number we're on. Alright, so 365, 365 days in a year, sort of average, not, not too much to say about that, I mean, that's what a lot of these average ones are going to be like, cool, that's how many days there are in the year, maybe that means something to you, but it can't mean anything too crazy if it's based on just, you know, something reality, 42, that is definitely a midwit number, that is definitely not the meaning to life, that is just a pop culture a reference Golden ratio is sort of like, it's sort of like a midwit sort of, so sorry, if anyone doesn't know what midwit is, it's basically someone trying to pretend to be, well, trying to give themselves the appearance of being smart when in reality they're really dumb. Imagine like a 100 IQ person trying to pretend that they're really smart. No, 100 IQ is average. Um, so... 42 would be one of those things where, oh, everyone thinks they're really smart. Everyone knows about 42. Everyone's, everyone gets that reference. There's nothing special actually about the number at all. It's not a smart number. Real smart people don't talk about 42. People that, people that dumb people think are smart talk about the number 42, right? As for the golden ratio, that's something that no one really thinks is all that smart. Um, but if you're saying, like, if someone asks you for your favorite number and you say the golden ratio, you're sort of being, like, a dick, but you're not trying to be a smart ass, which would be something like 42. Um, 42 is just Reddit. I guess in this thing, we could also just write Reddit. All right, enough ranting. The next one is going to be 27 over 7. And I would say this is actually a smart number. If you know this one, well, you know this one. Otherwise, I'd be looking that one up if you don't get that reference. Um, but that is actually one of the ones, if, someone's, if someone said that to me, sorry, not 22 over 7, sorry, I've, I'm dyslexic. 22 over 7, I'm pretty sure that's what I was saying. Yeah, but sorry, 22 over 7. If you know, you know. That's an actual, like, sort of, look, you're not a fucking Einstein if you, if you get that, but... If you work with numbers, especially in certain domains, in the real world, that's a number. That's a number. If someone said that, I could respect them. I could respect them. Negative one. Negative one is a sort of... It's, it's, it, it could be good. It could also be a bit midwit. I'm just sort of... It's sort of in between. It's sort of like high average, really. I could say, I'm going to say it's good. It's up here, it's down here. But in the end, it is a pretty decent number. It's not overly complex to some... It's not like a pop culture reference, right? If it's a pop culture reference from something that's like fake smart, like not even real smart, like literally fiction smart, it, it goes in midwit. Negative one's actually like... The historical development of negative one 
makes it pretty important. So it's good. Even though you are a bit of a smart ass, we'll allow it. Speaking of smart asses, negative one over 12. This one, this one is good. This one is good. Again, this is sort of like a, look, I'm not going to hype up the reference. It's not all that, no, the, for, like this, tw sorry, this 22 over seven and negative one over two, negative one over 12, they're not that actually great references. But if someone says them and you ref, ref, recognize it, you're like, oh, damn. If someone says 42, literally fucking everyone recognizes that shit. But if, if someone says this one and you recognize it, fuck yeah, that's good. That's good to go. Um, 10. I'm going to say that it's a good number. Base 10 is what we all count in. It's very useful. If a number's sort of really useful, it's going to go into good. Um, and it's it's a nice number, like 365. That might be useful to remember how many days are in a year, but it's not a, it's not a very like nice and pleasing number. Ten is something. It's just it's very human, and it's very nice. Sort of represents a lot about humanity more than 365. That's sort of just the the solar system, like the, it's just something that happened, right? 10 is something we made up. Um, number based on something sport related. Uh, this could be something like, oh, I love number so-and-so because it was on, it's someone's number on a basketball team. It's sort of just average. Like, I get that. And that's good if you want to memorize long digits of numbers. For example, if you wanted to memorize all the digits of pi, what you can do is if you know a lot of uh, sports teams, you can start um, sort of putting those numbers together and being like, oh, well, number 17 is this person and he shoots for the hoop, but it gets taken down by number eight of this person. So it's not, it is useful, but it's, it's sort of, it's sort of generic. It's sort of average. Like I can expect someone to, if they say a weird number, I'm like, why have you chosen that? Like, oh, cause, oh, someone on the uh, Seahawks number 27 like that sort of shit you know sorry I'm fucking I don't know if you can hear that but I'm playing with dice as I'm doing this um alright next up 24 sort of good sort of average it's it's like a it's a pleasing number it's got a lot of twos and fours and we'll get into that later but at the same time it's a bit ugly because it's it's not a two or a four it's not like a nice sort of combination of them either like it's sort of, it is a bit, it's sort of a bit weird. It's a bit nice. It's definitely not bad, but it'd be a very, it's sort of, it's sort of here-ish, but I'm just going to leave it in average because it is, it is average. Um, Roman numerals, this sort of, I would put you in midwit. Th this could be midwit. If you, if someone has asked you what your favorite number is and you say something like IV, that's, that's midwit tier, right? However, you might say, oh, I like the number, uh, you might say, oh, I like the number 10. And they might be like, oh, why do you like the number 10? Because of how it looks in Roman numerals. That's, that, that would put it up into good, I would say. But on average, if anyone said IV or something like that, it would be bad. Well, midwit, but so I'm just going to average it out and put it in bad. Um, the next thing as well is... Something in a foreign language. This is sort of the same thing, basically. Um, so it's just going to go in bad. Like, again, if you like it because of how it sounds or how it's written in the foreign language, that puts it up in the good. That's a pretty good reason. However, if you were to say it midwit, like, ooh, actually, no, I, uh, look, I'm still going to maybe an average. I'm going to put it in bad because then I feel bad about Roman numerals. Um, number eight. Number eight is a pre... It, it is a good number. It's not good enough to get into the good tier though. And again, it's that sort of like fours and twos and that sort of thing. It's good in that sense. It's a nice number. However, the why not just do a four or a two or another or a nicer number, right? It's got that nicety, 
but it's sort of you settle in for second best at least there's no need for that square root 2 I don't say this is good this is another useful number another useful number if you're um so you get this in a lot of um well you get this in a lot of situations but to be more specific fucking that looks horrible hold on let me just drop a better diagram so square square root two boom is the diagonal so, so you get you can get that commonly in a lot of our uh, places um and I am just going to double check this because that'll be embarrassing if I've got this wrong. 1, 1. We know Pythagoras 3 and 1 squared plus 1 squared equals square root 2. Yeah, good. I was I was concerned that I might have... Um, I just didn't want to uh, get that fucking wrong. But I'm glad that I've gotten it right. But um, this can be useful in a number of instances. Uh, one of the things in a lot of video games, what you will have is you will have a uh, sort of forward. Sorry, you will have forward and sideways movement, right? And this might be one unit a second, and this might be one unit a second. So normally when you travel forward, you go one unit a second forward. You just walk one unit a second forward. And if you were to go to the right, you go one unit a second to the right. If you want to go the fastest speed possible, you should hold forwards and right because you'll go one unit this way, one unit this way, which adds to square root two units that way. And all you just do is then just uh, look your camera slightly to the left and then you go faster. But it pops up in a number of places, unlike just, you know, video games. It actually does pop up. You know, it's a real sort of useful thing. You know, boxes are pretty damn common. It's nice to know the sort of diagonal length if you wanted to fit something. Like, if it, something doesn't fit in the box, you want to sort of tilt it. It's nice to sort of be able to work out that shit pretty quickly. Um, uh, next up, we have some combination of E and pi. That goes in, so this is the category over here called Insane Freak. These, these are fucking, if someone says one of these, they're, they're insane. They're sort of beyond my level. Well, no, I wouldn't say they're beyond my level, but they're fucking, like, because obviously there is the God level above that, which is what I think is objectively, like, the best numbers. But if someone says one of these, they're fucking crazy, and I have unreal respect for that. I'm just going to write down here, Mirren. If someone says one of these numbers up in this sort of insane freak category, they are good. They are fucking crazy, but I have mad respect for that. I've mad. It's like, it's like people who go down these crazy routes in life, but they're not hypocrites, right? You get what I'm saying? Like they're extreme. They are extreme in their views and their views like may not align with yours, but I can respect that when someone sticks to their values and they're not a hypocrite. That's these guys, but they're just mentally insane. But I can respect that they're like, Damn, there's, there's some respect in being insane. Um, we got to get through these numbers a bit quicker or else we're going to be here forever. Anything else under a square root? Anything else under a square root doesn't really have much sort of... Like if you said, if you said square root 4, midwit. Anything else under a square root though, like an actual fucking number that can't be reduced under a square root... It goes in there because most of the time they're not going to be too useful and they're just sort of really ugly. Um, and they, they don't really mean all that much. Um, C, also known as speed of light. In the midwit, every fucking person that goes through high school does a science course gets told, or at least they should, I don't know how the situation is in America, but at least in Australia, when you go through high school, and when you go through science classes, and you're not a complete, f like, dropout, you learn that C is a speed of light. That's a high schooler thing. High schools aren't smart. Reddit tier, midwit tier, worst tier. And that goes with anything else like C. Sciencey shit. If you're fucking, but yeah. So C and anything else like C, 
midwit. You're not that smart for knowing that C is the speed of light. It's just like, and that's just like popular science. Pop science isn't fucking smart. Um, nine. Nine is... Nine is better than eight. I will say nine is better than eight. Because it's three squared, right? And three is, a, three is a number we'll get to later. But nine, I had respect for nine. Like, it's not, a, it's not a nice looking number. It is slightly ugly with it being an odd. But nine is a good number. Nine is a good number. If you're on the 90th percentile, you're doing all right. Or you're doing really bad. But I have respect for you. So as long as you're not average, I have respect. We get okay. We're getting sidetracked. Seven. Does seven go into God tier? Is what I want to. That's it's um. It's definitely borderline. It gets a high good. I think it gets a high good because it is look. It is a really good number, but at the same time, it is average as hell because it's what everyone will choose. In some ways, it does represent humans better than 10, but it sort of represents the unconscious mind of humans, right? Which is sort of chaotic. I, I, I can't put it in God tier. I can't put it in God tier, but it's, it's a close contender. It's probably the closest one to being in God tier without actually being in God tier. Five. Five is a very sort of engineer. When I think of five, I think of sort of engineering. It's a nice sort of number that fits. It's nice to round things. You get a lot of precision if you round things down to fives um, in any sort of digit space. Um, it's, very, it's a very workable number, very easy to understand, and it gives you a bit more sort of precision than just rounding everything to tens. That's a good number for me. It's a good number for me. It is a bit ugly, but it gets, it gets a lot of jobs done. And it's got respect for that. 18. Age of consent. That's really what people are thinking when they think of 18. Hopefully. I can't imagine anything else too exciting about 18. It's, you know, 9 times 2. Not all that interesting. Just an age of consent. Sort of just average. You know. Trying to think of anything. Sorry, a lot of these times when I'm pausing, it's just me trying to think about is there anything I've missed on the past number? Six, sort of, again, average. Sort of like a lot of these, a lot of even numbers are much nicer than odd numbers, but when we're in the sort of one to 10 range, if you're an even number and you're not purely twos and fours, then you're losing out to the twos and fours because the twos and fours are just sort of better, right? So six is like twos, but it's threes. So it's sort of got like an oddness to it. But at the same time, it isn't even. But it's just outclassed by two. Well, it's just average. And you're going to find that look, if it's in between one to ten, it's very commonly used so... It's going to go into average. It's probably not going to go into bad or midwit. And no one insane is going to... If someone was legitimately insane, they're not going to pick a number between 1 and 10. Right? So 6 is just... A lot of these numbers in between 1 and 10 are going to be average. All good. All good. They're going to be very aesthetically pleasing or functional to get into good, to move up from an average number to good. And then God, we'll, we'll get to that later. We'll get to that later. High powers of 2, E dot G, 256 or 1024. This to me just means that you work with computers. Right. Every computer related job, I would hope, people have memorized values like 256, 1024. Even if you're not doing something explicitly computer related, maybe you're an artist or something like that, still knowing that there's 256. Uh, values for each color channel is pretty important so anything to sort of do with working with computer systems or digital systems you will end up memorizing these numbers and it shocks me whenever i meet someone that doesn't understand that like sort of you know a kilobyte is 1024 bytes or a gigabyte is 1024 gigabytes 
um, or Gibby and Kibi bites, I should say, is the correct term. Um, so that is shocking. But they're, they're good. They're useful. They're just good to know. Um, all right, 911 or 911. This is sort of weird. This is like sort of insane freak, but like bad. So I'm just going to put it in bad. 911 is either, you know, the massive um, horrible incident in America. So having that as your favorite number or something like that is sort of a bit weird. Like I could understand if maybe you lost someone on that day, but then why would 911 be your favorite number? All right? Sort of a weird thing to memorize people is by the thing that killed them and not what something they did during their life. It's also the emergency number in America as well, which is sort of a bit concerning if that's your like sort of favorite number and if that's what you sort of gravitate towards. Um, you know, whether that be you're constantly the victim of a crime or you're constantly, or you just love the police. Either way, it's sort of not too ideal. I don't think, it's not even the police line, is it? It's just the general emergency line. It's, just, it's a bit weird to sort of have that as your favorite number. Normally when someone's calling that number, something's gone really wrong. And on the date 9-11, something went really wrong as well, so... It's sort of a weird number to have. Two. Two is... Actually, we're going to... Look. It's not in God tier. It's not in God tier yet, maybe. We're taking out two. And we're taking out seven. Look, if I can pick them up. Fuck this. Hold on. Taking out two. We're taking out seven. We'll do these at the end. Contenders. Let me just talk quickly about two. Two is a very nice number. We get binary from two. We get true or false from two. Two is a number that was my personal one or sort of my personal favorite. It was definitely my second favorite for the longest period of time. And it's just because it's a very mathematically nice number. Two choices, true or false. Um, all computers run on base two. It's sort of what transistors come through, the true or false, on or off. Two is a highly used number. And is very sort of human, very sort of useful in human created life, you know. Like when we talk about things that we make, when we, when humans make things, we like to make them in like twos. You know, we have our on and options, you have your booleans, your switches, all that sort of stuff. So twos are a very functional number, and especially in math as well. You can use sort of twos to do a lot of things. Um, it's sort of like... The I think of it as sort of the human created number. It's like you do have things like one and zero and stuff like that, but um, two is definitely the mo the nicest out of all those. You can imagine something like zero sort of means nothing, and one or negative one they're a bit ugly with them being odds twos even. You know, and you know even numbers they're always nice to work with. It's sort of it's a, it's a human nice to work with number, and it's what we use in a lot of systems. So two is a contender for God tier, as is seven. Right. Sorry, sidetracked. Thirteen. Thirteen is when your teenage years start. Um, it's a bit weird to have thirteen as your favorite number because like, you could be a pedophile. Um, 13 and 12, I'm starting to think like, hmm, that's, uh, that's sort of like pedophile numbers. And I can't think, look, 12 is at least a nice number. 13 is when you just start becoming a teenager. And there's nothing really actually good about when you were a teenager. You can imagine when you were 13, it wasn't the greatest time of your life, most likely. It was... You know, it was the start of puberty. It wasn't the end of puberty where you got the fucking sick, deep voice and longer dick and all that shit. No, it's a start of puberty where everything's fucking awkward and you're changing and it's rough and you're in a new school and all that shit. So if someone likes 13, I'm inclined to think they like it because they're a pedophile. Anyway. Um, and of course, if you're a pedophile, you're going bad.
12, sorry, what are we at? 21? Sorry, yeah, yeah, 21. 21's the age of consent. That is sort of, sort of worse than the age of 18 in my eyes. That's like, mm, it's when the brain stops developing. 21. 21 and 18, look, I'll move them real close to each other. Just to confuse everyone. 18 and 21, they're just ages of consent. They can be really grouped together. I would honestly put 18 slightly above 21. And just in my eyes, maybe it's just my Australian bias coming in because when we turn 18, you are the adult. And I know in America, that's at 21. To me, 18 is just, it, it felt like a good age to sort of finish school and move on. I can't imagine sticking around for like another three years. Um, I guess that's what a degree is for. But uh, when you enter the degree, you should be an adult. If you're living away from your parents, you should be an adult. And I think moving away at age 18, that's what I did. And I think that's a good choice. Another three years, I don't think is ideal. I don't think you get much out of those extra three years. Um, that's not to say I don't think you shouldn't. I can, I can agree that maybe you shouldn't be able to drink until you're 21. Uh, that'll be a controversial opinion, but I'm very teetotal. Maybe something like driving as well, maybe? No, probably not. No, I'd say driving at 16 is all right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think about more about 21, but yeah, no. Nah. Um, pie. You're in a midwit category, bro. Everyone knows about pie. Again, high school students, bro. This isn't like some special combination of E and pie. When I'm talking about the special combination of E and pie, I'm talking about something like, what is it, pie to the negative... No, that's, what's the thing where it's like cos and sine, where it's like pi to the, or e to the negative pi plus i or some shit like that, to find out um, sine and cos. Like that's, that's kind of fuck. If you've memorized, like, if you've memorized that, that's impressive. If you're just saying pi, like if someone asks you, oh, what's your favorite number? Pi. Fuck off. Uh, what else? 100. Hundreds are a very nice number. See, sort of 10. It's sort of the same deal as 10. In fact, you know what? I know it's going to come up later. We'll put 10,000 up here as well. Or 1,000. 10,000? Does that get up there? I'll just, I'm just going to put a dot, dot, dot after this because you get like 1,000, 10,000, 100,000, million. Those are all nice numbers. When we, and they're, they're sort of the different magnitudes for people, things like 10, when 10, I think about sort of 10 weeks, well, eight to 10 weeks, but you know, if you want to get the most out of it, 10 weeks, that's how long you should do a program for before, well, sorry, this is all program theory. So this, I'm here, I'm talking about like fitness training, but I'm also talking about mental training. For example, trying to learn something or study something, uh, at around, so say you, you're doing the same thing day after day. So you're trying to memorize something, right? Day after day. After about four weeks, you'll start to see a decline in it. For example, if you started a strength program after the fourth week of that strength program, you will start to see diminishing returns. And then by the end of the eighth to 10 week, right around the eight to 10 week mark, that's when you're from that program, assuming you've been doing basically the same thing every single week, that eight to 10 week mark is when you basically stagnate, right? And that, and the, basically the idea is then after the eight to 10 week mark, you either take a break or you, you take a break or you, or you take some sort of break, whether it be a really quick break, like one day, or you take like a two week break, doesn't matter. But then you'd start ideally a new program or you'd change something major about the program. So 10, when I'm working on 10, like that's a very, I'm working on the, ma I'm working on the magnitude of weeks. When I'm talking about a hundred, I'm thinking about like hours of commitment. When I'm talking about a thousand, I'm thinking about deep commitment. When I'm thinking about 10,000, I'm thinking about commitment beyond my lifetime. When I'm thinking about a million, I'm thinking about, you know, money and stuff like that. So these are all magnitudes of sort of high performance and achievement, right? And again, like, what is one up here? No, one is not up here, but I would put that up in here as well. Because one, I'm thinking about first. So all these sort of powers of 10, to me, they scream performance, they scream high achievement, right? And they they scream like, and they're very, they're very simple, they're very functional, but they're sort of orders of magnitude. 
sort of have general meanings as opposed to some of these specific ones like 18. 18 is a very specific number. 10, 100,000, not very specific. But they op- they leave you with a, they sort of give you a general sort of idea. They give you a vague sense, like sort of theme about what sort of space we're working in instead of a specific atomized thing. Um, oh, we got off the track there a bit. 12 sort of feels like a pedophile number again so I'm I don't want to put it high but 12 was a nice number I used to like the number 12 just because it was the 4 and 6 and 2 I don't know there was something about 12 where I liked I wanted I guess I wanted maybe to like 11 but 11 sort of ugly because it's odd so 12 was sort of there I'm going to put 12 at average because 13 as soon as you add that teen to it, you start thinking teenage, you think puberty. And that's the lowest edge of the teens. So that's where I'm thinking pedophiles. When I think about 12, I'm thinking still a kid, not a teen. So there's there's not even a... I, I'm assuming pedophilia starts at age 13, right? I can't imagine anyone would be doing that shit to 12-year-olds. Yeah, so I used to look. Th- sorry, what did I say before? Fucking like six and four. No, three and three and four is what this one screamed out to me. And I like I like the numbers three and four. So yeah, twelve. All right. Next up, we got a goggle or a goggle goggleplex. This is a midwit number. That's not something you learned in high school, maybe, but it is a little fucking, like, trivia fact. That's not all that impressive, right? Oh, where did the name Google come from? Oh, it comes from this, cause It's a little trivia fact. If you say this, you're saying it because you want to impress people with your trivia. I'm not impressed. Half or 0.5 or 1 over 2. However you want to write it average it's it's it could be good but it's sort of going down to midwood as well but it is nice i'll put it at average um anything complex besides i um probably an insane freak if you're saying a complex number that isn't just i or negative i or something like that that's fucked. That is cooked. But I got respect for that. Like, because if... I don't even know how that could mean something for you, for you to, like, even bring it up. If I'm thinking complex numbers, I'm, oh, yeah, I. Or, like, square root negative one. Cool. Midwit. But something complex besides I? That's something, like, I'd have to think about to th- think of a value for, right? If you're just taken one up like that or if that's your favorite number like like that impressive but you're definitely insane zero zero is a good number round it's not a god it's not a contender for the god spot um just because it is at the same time also nothing represents nothing and it's sort of like for a long period is like you can't really count with zero Unless, of course, you know, you're counting from zero in computing terms. Um, yeah, it's sort of... It doesn't have a lot of use in the real world. Sort of the problem with zero. Otherwise, it is sort of a great sort of number. Sure, it can be a midwit number. Like, someone's asking what's your favorite number and you said zero. Yeah. But at the same time, it is, it is an even. Or at least I see it as an even and everyone should see it as an even. It's a nice round number. The character is visually appeasing, uh, 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 appealing. Easy to write. Basic. It's good. But it's not great. Number that has personal significance. This goes in good. If you if you got a number that's got personal significance, and I don't mean like the sporting fucking related one where 
it's your favorite hockey player or some shit like that. I mean, it's just like, you know, the, the day you got married or when something happened that affected you greatly or something like that. If it's a memorable thing in your life, then it means your life has an actual story, or at least in your eyes. And that's worth going good to. If you're attaching a number of significance and it's to do with your life, go for it, man. I think that's good. I think that's good. I want to hear what that number meant to you. If it's something like I got married, I'm like, okay, cool. I, good for you. I Look, I don't care, but I respect it. If it's something like, bro, this is the fucking year when I saw fucking aliens. Bam, you're into the insane freak category. And I got respect for that. It was like, this is the exact date, time code and postal code and unit all combined into one number for when I spotted the aliens coming down and abducting someone. Boom. Insane freak category. Instantly. And instantly like that, I want to know more. Tell me more. 23, sort of ugly. It's just a worse version of 21. Like 20, isn't 23 supposed to be like the, the, you're a really adult. So sorry, you have 16 where it's like, all right, you're almost an adult. 18, like, okay, you're an adult. 21, it's like, all right, your brain stopped developing. So you're not going to be fucked up for the rest of your life. And then 23 is like, all right, now your brain's really done developing. Like, right now you're getting diminishing returns. Like, well, like now it's just fucking, now you're starting to really stagnate. Yeah. 23, piss off. Like, we've already had fucking 16, 18, 21. Who cares? All right? And if everyone... Like, the reason 23 exists is just to be the fucking, like... People weren't happy with 21. I, I'm, I guarantee if people just... All right, 23 is when we're going to allow people to drink alcohol. 23 is when you're adult. People would just start saying, like, 25 or 27. Just that sort of shit. Yeah. Next number. One out of one. In, insane if you say this you there's something not right in your head because I like most people I was like oh that goes in the midwit right he's trying to be smart he's trying to be funny no if someone's trying to be smart and they say one out of one they are fucking they got something wrong in their head and for that I respect it because like it's just like midwit gone wrong but in, in a sense that's gone right because you failed to be a midwit, which means that you're not a midwit, right? One out of one. Man, I gotta hurry this one on. We've done a thousand. 16. I swear we already did 16. 16, I, I wanna put an average. Another sort of age type thing when a lot of people get their car license. So 16 might have been when they were able to drive cars, and you know, cars aren't. Horrible. I can... 16 is average. Uh, have we already done multiples of 5? Okay, no. Multiples of 5. Or... What is it right? A multiple of 5. Goes in the sort of... Is it average or is it good? It's sort of hard for me to tell. It could even be insane. Like, if someone said 35... I'm intrigued but I'm not sure if I'd like the answer. If anyone here does like a multiple of five, that isn't just five or like 10 or something like that. If someone likes 15 or 45 or something like that, you'd need to explain more. You'd need to explain more. You go here, you go fucking, sorry, you go right here. Cause I don't know where you go, man. I honestly don't know. I've never met anyone that liked multiples of five. So talked about multiple, a specific multiple of five. Here. I'm not talking about multiples of five in general. Cause that's just, we're just talking about five then, aren't we? I'm talking about someone who's like, really, he really likes the number 35. Like maybe that's his favorite number. Or maybe he uses 35 all the time. Or maybe there's like 75 or something like that. I, I don't see how that would even occur, right? So I'd be impressed. I We talked about I before, midwit shit. Congrats, you know, complex numbers. Guess what? People learn that in high school. Still, all these numbers you learn in high school. Let's put E up here as well. E, you learn that in high school. Cool, man. Cool. I reckon anyone that says E is their favorite number, all right, give me the first three digits. I reckon they couldn't do it. I reckon they couldn't do it. Pi, you can. 3.1415 or some shit like that. E, not a chance. And C, that even begins with three. I Honestly, isn't E like 2.71 or something like that? I don't know. 
Isn't three like three point? It's either three point three something or three point six something. I don't know. Looking back on this video, it'll probably be horrible when I fucked up all these numbers. Someone says X or Y. They say a variable. Midwit, bro. You're trying to be a fucking. You've misunderstood those math questions. You you fail. I know that you fucking struggled with math in high school. If you say X or Y. Because they're fucking variables, bro. They're not numbers. They hold numbers. But like, it's like, it's like, what's your favorite? Oh, what's your favorite item of clothing? The laundry machine. No cunt. The laundry machine takes clothes in and spits clothes out when it's done. It isn't an item of clothing. It's the same with variables, X or Y. They aren't numbers in themselves, but they hold numbers, right? It's like, it's, it's concealing the number. It's like the number dressed up. Yeah. The, the other case could be, I guess, like, who's your favorite astronaut? Spacesuit. No, bro. Or like this spacesuit. No, bro. That's a spacesuit. That's not a person. There was a person inside that spacesuit. Do you mean that person? No, I mean the spacesuit. No, bro. Not how it works. Midwit. That's just like faking I was good at math. It's like, oh, I'm a mathy person. No, you failed. Oh, yeah. Okay. I gotta stop getting so pissed off and going on mad rants about all these numbers. 666. If you like 666, you are, of course, being edgy. No, why am I putting that in average? What the hell? That's bad. Sorry. What else have I been chucking on average that I thought was bad? My God. 666, negative number. Like, you're just trying to be edgy. There's nothing cool about 666, except that you really hate Christianity, I guess. In which case, you're fucking bad. So in something like three bananas or th th some some amount of apples. You said anything like that to me? Fuck, you are cooked. I want to know more. If you're talking about numbers and you're just counting stuff, pff, that's something that like, I wouldn't be expecting that. This shit over here in the insane free category, that shit that I wouldn't expect anyone to say. So if you said that to me, I'd be like, holy shit, I'm impressed. Like you've broken, you've just expanded my mind. You've changed my perception of who you, you've said a fucking, it's the first time meeting you. I'm like, quick, quick test, what's your favorite number? You said three bananas. I'm like, I gotta know more about this guy. But I feel like I keep repeating myself on a lot of these things. I feel like I've already said that a million times. 69, haha, funny number, bad. 420, haha, weed. It's just the devil, more devil numbers. These are probably more devil numbers than 666, by the way. So if you really hate Christianity, go for one of those instead. Um, number four. Four is a contender for the God spot. Because that's two to the power of two. Four is a very functional number. So two is, sorry, two is a very functional number, very human. We like to, humans like to use twos. Sort of a human created number, we like to use twos. We like things to be true or false. We like two choices, yes or no, on or off. Everything we work with on computers is in twos. Four is like the mathematical art of two. It's like we took two and we tried to make something out of it. Four is that. It's two plus two, two times two, two squared. It's sort of, it's like the math. So seven up here in the contender spot. We like that because that represents a lot of the unconscious human mind, which is a very complex system. And you can summarize it with just the number seven. Very good. Two, a number that we really, really like to use. And four is sort of the math, medical sort of, I'd say four is what you would use to represent mathematics as a whole. Like maybe you'd use two. It's either between two or four, but four Math is sort of like art with numbers and number systems and all that sort of stuff, right? Or art that has come from that. Four is the, is like two, but art it up. I hope that makes sense. Although I'm feeling like I'm starting to sound like the insane freak to a lot of people, which is good. 22, just worse than 21, really. Like, what's 22 got going for it? Nothing. 
Well, at least 21, like, means something. What's 22 got going for it? Nothing. Nothing I can think of. Three. Three. I'm just going to go ahead and... S I'm, I can't hold it any... I can't hold it in. <laughs> three is a god tier number. 100% three is a god tier number. And I've got to be completely honest with you. For the longest time in my life, I thought four was the god tier number. Right? I thought four was a god tier number because it was like the enhanced version of two. It was like two on steroids. Right? Because I, I used two a lot. And four was just there as like the enhanced two. I've already said that. I'm repeating myself. I've talked about two. Three, on the other hand, isn't human made. Three is natural. Three is what you find in nature. The mind, body, the soul. Three is God's number. Literally, God's number. Was it the mind, body, and spirit? The Father, Son, the Holy Ghost? Everything. And every time in my life when I want to do things, I always find out that there's always three cases for it. When you make models and all that stuff, there's always two cases for things. And they, maybe they break down into another two and now you have four because you've got two for each two, right? But three is what you actually find in nature. When you actually try, try to do things and actually try and make sense of things, three is what you come up with. With two, you have your yes, you know. But three, you have your yes, you know, and something else. You have your on and off and you, you're sort of in the middle. Something went horribly wrong. Pass, fail, fucking undecided. So three, three is like sort of the exception case for the two. We, we all want things to be two, but three is what happens in nature. And it's got all that sort of God imagery. The Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, all that sort of stuff. When you think about twos, you think about two pi, the perfect circle, right? Everyone likes the perfect circle, but the perfect circle isn't realistic. It's very hard to achieve the perfect circle. Meanwhile, triangles are the backbone of all building or all buildings, basically, construction-wise, because they're the most stable one. You look at the pyramids, for example, incredibly stable. Balls, they roll around, they're unstable, they're fucking hard to control. Three, on the other hand, triangles, structurally stable, hierarchies which we know like i'm not going to get into a whole political thing here but hierarchies aren't as bad as people think in fact they're incredibly functional and three represents all of that it's the natural number it's the god number that's why it is the one the god tier it's not to say that four two and seven are bad numbers they are beyond good absolutely and that there would have been a time where i thought three was bad and that four or two would have been the God tier number. But as I've grown as a human and I've come to realize more things and I've developed, I've looked back and I've looked forwards and three is the answer. Four and two just don't cut it like three does. I'm going to move on. Some long ass number. Memorized to a lot of digits. Sorry, I'm struggling to fucking type. Insane category. If you fucking know a number past like five digits or some shit, like I look, the more digits you memorize, the more you're a freak. Like I said pi 3.1415 to like, what's that, five digits? If you're saying pi like 100 digits, freak. If you're saying any number down here, like 100 digits, of course, like unlike Google, Googleplex or whatever it is, if you know C to a lot of digits, E to a lot of digits, any sort of science you think to a lot of digits, if you have memorized a lot of digits, respect, respect. 255. 255 is sort of like the high powers of two, um, but counting from zero. So that sort of goes up here with the high powers of two. That's a very sort of graphical one. So a lot of the graphical guys, they know that the values stop at 255, not 256. I know at least when I was working with graphics early on, you know, working with hex codes and all that stuff and sort of RGB value, the guy, oh, just do it in hex, bro. Why are we doing RGB values? 
and RGB values would come up. You'd know two five five two five five two five five if you wanted fucking what's that black? Oh, you know two five five zero two five five is what I would use a lot for magenta. I like that pure magenta. So two five five very graphically. You work in digital systems. You use graphics two five five comes up a lot. Comes up a lot. And yeah, it is ugly, but it's functional. Um, one, one. Again, that's a contender for the top spot, I would say. Is it? Because it's also very average. No, I'm not going to say it is a contender for the top spot, because... What does it mean? It's no more a contender for the top spot than zero. And if we put zero down in good, then one can go down in good. They'll go up there. They'll go, they'll go up. They'll go high. Look at high, don't get me wrong, they're high up there. But there's problems with them. Last number we're gonna do a phone num let's use the pound sign. A phone number that isn't yours. Memorized all digits. Look, that you might think insane freak. That goes in good. Because one eight double oh six triple five oh six was drilled into me as a kid watching TV for the adult reading and writing hotline. So you don't need to be an insane freak to know one of those. But it still is impressive to know, especially in today's day and age where everyone's got like contact libraries and they're not like punching in numbers like they were before. To know a phone number off by heart that isn't yours, well that, and when I say isn't yours, of course I mean like work phones and stuff like that. You may know your own phone number and your work phone number, but if you know someone else's phone number, someone else's like work number it's like why would you surely if you surely if you call that number a lot you just have it saved somewhere but to have it memorized that's impressive and there that is it that's the final rankings again this isn't my opinion this is objective fact <laughs>